Hello, John here again. Uh, this is uh, part two of the uh, overview of the kernel jump vectors. As um, I didn't realise it was going to take me so long to actually talk about them. So hopefully this will be the second part of two and uh, we'll start off from where we left off. So here we go. Read ST, well this is basically just to read, uh, which is jump address FFB7, this is to read the current error that's in the system. All right. So when you've done open and, and other jump commands, you'll see that it was, there was a, in the errors, there was a, 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 a word read ST. And that allows you, if you, once you've done the open, you can read the ST to f check that everything was okay. Now, if it wasn't okay, it'd be one of the functions that you can see below. So, for example, um, error 4 is a short block, and that's normally done on the, on, on the cassette read or the cassette very fine load. Um, most common one is 128, which is device not present. Because if you're talking to a disk drive and you haven't got it plugged in, of course it's not going to be uh, present. And that's the most common one that you'll be testing for when you're talking to serial bus devices. Restore. Right, this restores the default system and interrupt vectors. So if you've, when you're, when you're, you've got a memory resonant program and they've decided to unload it, if you run FF8A, that will restore everything back to the default so it'll restore all the, the interrupts back to the normal ones it'll restore all the basic jump vectors back to what they were and it will restore the memory vectors back to what they were and it's just basically put the system back like a warm start save which is ffd8 allows you to save the memory to a specific device so you have to do the preparation routines and then what you do is the the accumulator has to um, specify the zero page jump address for the start of the memory and the x and y registers will be the uh, will be the low and high byte of the end of the memory so you the accumulator would say dollar um, 14 so therefore dollar 14 and dollar 15 in zero page has to specify the start of the memory and then the x and y will specify where you want to save up to. Scan key, FF97, this routine scans the keyboard. So eh, it, it bypasses the buffer, it is talking to the keyboard directly. Now this routine is normally used in your interrupts, so as soon as you press a key, it will be scanned by this routine and then it will be returned um, as normal and put the character into the keyboard buffer so it doesn't return the character to you what it does is you're telling it scan the keyboard please now it scans the keyboard identifies if there's it and then puts it into the keyboard buffer screen which is FFDE returns the number of rows and columns that are currently are represented on the screen and this is useful if you're doing cross uh, computer programming because the VIC-20 has a different screen dimension set than the Commodore 64. So if you run this routine first to identify what your screen parameters are, then you shouldn't go wrong. Second, right, this FF, which is jump vector FF93, allows you to send the secondary address for the listen so you've already called the listen and then you immediately call the second and this sets like I said like I've just said the secondary address for that device all right and you put the secondary address into the accumulator for it to run set LFS is FFBA and this basically sets up a logical file so this is the first if you want to set up a new channel to, to either talk in or out so you first have to, to set up the logical file number so the accumulator will have the file number in 
The Y register will have the secondary address or command address and the X register will have the device um, device number. So let's say if we're talking to the disk drive you'll have the A will be 15 which is channel 15, uh, file 15, X register will be 8 or 9 or 10 or 11 and then the Y one will be 15 because we want to be in command mode when we're talking to the disk drive. So here's a list of all the device numbers and their secondary addresses. So as you can see the default device which is zero is the keyboard has no secondary address. Um, device number one is the data set and the secondary address you can specify naught for loading, one for writing or two for writing with a uh, file end of, end of uh, tape. Device number two is the RS-232 interface on the serial bus. Device three is the screen and you can have both secondary address noughts and ones on there at uh, naught or one. The device number above three all refer to devices connected through the serial port and they are handed, handled in exactly the same way from the kernel's point of view. So from device three <coughs> They're all done by the um, serial bus. So form 5, devices form 5 are printers and they have secondary addresses as well. So if you put a secondary address of 0, you'll get capital letters and graphical symbols. Or if you do 7, you'll get capital, small, capital and small letters. 6 and 7 are plotters. Now you used to be able to have a plotter for the Commodore 64 which allowed you to draw uh, very detailed diagrams and then 8 through to 30 are all disk drives so potentially you could have 30 disk drives hooked up to your uh, Commodore 64 but unfortunately some of the drives were only you could only configure up to um, I think it's 12 so it was 8, 9, 10, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 yeah and the secondary addresses so 2 to 14 are data channels so you can uh, have 12 channels open and then channel 15 would be the command channel so that's basically we're not sending data to the disk drive to store we're sending data to the disk drive to perform a command set message uh, which is FF90 this allows you to uh, control uh, a system message out and what you do is you put in the accumulator what message you want to send out and that routine then will send that error message out to the um, the system um, so if you've de if you've detected an error yourself you could then put that system on uh, that error onto the system before without any problem and then you pick up that in a different place set name which is FFDB so this is after you've done set logical file number which is set LSFSS and this is basically setting the name of the file so um, your and you would use this for open save and load the accumulator will have the length of the file name that you want to set and the X and Y register will be the low and high bytes of the memory address of where the file name is stored and that is important it's where it is stored and I will show we'll, we'll go into this into further detail um, when we do the the much more detailed um, uh, videos set time just like get time but this time it's the other way around so it's FFDB and we will use the A register which is the most significant bit the X register which is the next most significant bit and the Y register which is the least significant bytes sorry, not bits, bytes and that can allows us to set the time uh, the system clock so if you want, you, when you run the routine you want it to start at the same time frame every time you run it you would use this to set the system clock Uh, set TMO 
this sets the IEEE bus uh, timeout flag, which is jump vector FFA2. Now the IEEE bus was uh, uh, the set, sort of like a sort of parallel bus that um, the Commodore Pets used to use when talking with printers and, and stuff like that. Now the IEEE bus, I think, is the user port on the Commodore 64. <coughs> now I'm not too sure because the serial bus is a serial port and I was and on the 64 the only parallel system that we've got is on the user uh, on the user port so I'm assuming that this is to control the user port but we will go into that and look into that uh, in later videos because I'm expecting something from the states that will allow us to play with that stop which is jump vector FFE1 <coughs> excuse me this uh, checks to see if the stop key has been pressed on the uh, keyboard. So if you're running and you run this, it will detect if the stop key has been set. And what it is, it puts it into the, the Z, flag, uh, Z flag. And when you run this, it will reset all the channels. So as well as um, setting the Z flag to say, have I pressed the stop key? it will set it will reset all the channels so it's like a run stop and restore talk well that's just the, like the same with listen but what you're doing is uh, you're commanding a device to talk to you the computer using jump vector F, uh, ffb4 you set the accumulator to be the device number and this allows you to <coughs> tell that device right talk to us and so and then you would have the input channel set open and everything. TKSA sends the secondary address to the device when you've commanded it to talk. So depending on how you want that device to react, that you have to then send the secondary address to tell that device how to react. And that's what this is what it's all about. And it's using FF96 jump vector. UD time that updates the system um, system clock. So basically, it's doing a, uh, a clock tick. Because sometimes, if you've got your computer doing something really heavy, <coughs> or even if you've disabled the interrupts, you've got to still keep the clock ticking. So if you've disabled the interrupts, then you've got to run this command to update this clock um, regularly, or it'll end up with. Um, timing issues when you're talking to your devices. Unlisten, which is FFAE, <coughs> commands all the devices on the serial bus to stop receiving data. So basically, if you set multiple devices to listen on the serial, uh, serial bus, this routine tells them all to stop listening. So you can do it in one go. You don't have to do it one at a time. Same with Untalk, FFAB. This tells all the devices on the serial bus to stop talking and then it's just like the stop listening. So it just basically frees up the serial, the serial bus. Now vector, um, which is jump um, address FF8D, allows you to set or read the RAM um, vectors. So X and Y will contain the low and high byte of the pointers if if you if the carry is set to zero it will copy your user table to the vector table system and your <coughs> your user table will be specified by x and y as in the low and high byte of your table so if you want to over overload or overwrite the jump vectors of the system you can do it this using this one command by setting the carry to be zero it will copy your user table vectors onto the system table vectors and then use them thereafter. If the carry flag is set to 1, it will copy the vector table to your user table that you've specified in X and Y. This is good if you want to just change one vector, yeah, or more than one vector, because then you can download the vectors table to your table and then upload it or you can have your vector table predefined 
in your software and then just do an up an up late upload to the system so as soon as you call this that's it your your junk vectors then take precedence and lastly these are the error numbers that can come out of your the, the files so when you open if you if you try and open a, a file number that's already open you'll get error 2 which is file already open or file not found, device not present, which is the most common one, and the file name is missing. These are values that are returned back during the open process or, or anything. So when it comes back with the, because <coughs> you'll notice that in some of the routines had error numbers. Right, so if I do, let's see if I can find, there we go. So save comes back with 5, 8 and 9. So the possible errors that could come back would be device not present, uh, file name is missing or illegal file number. So these are the error numbers that can come out of those specific routines. But they are just specific numbers. Anyway, thanks for listening and I hope this has been informative. But we will go into more depth with these jump vectors in future videos where we will do examples. Alright, well this is John, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care, bye!